Jean, uh, I have, I met Jean in early 80s. And uh, I met him through a Mennonite. Let me take my glasses off. Okay. Uh, I met Jean Sharp. Uh, through his books. There is a Mennonite in Jerusalem and I opened the center and the center name is the Palestinian Center for the Study of Nonviolence. And uh, she brought a book of Jean Sharp and she told me that uh, Jean Sharp is the best person if you want to know about uh, nonviolence. He is He's the one who wrote so many books and you will be interested in this fellow. So I have, I have his book. I like several uh, chapters of his books, but not, not all of it. And I translate his book into Arabic, not all his book. And uh, then I gave it to her uh, English copy because she said that I, she wanted it back. And uh, I gave her what I translated. And unfortunately, she sent it to Jean Sharp and Jean. And then I got a call from a fellow by the name of Jean Sharp. And he said, what you are doing? And uh, I said, who are you? I said, I'm Jean Sharp and you, are a violent person. I said, well, that's good at least. Uh, and you are a nonviolent person. He said, you translated without my permission. <laughs> that's one thing. You did not translate all the chapters. That's two things. You didn't give me the chance to edit or to bring people to edit the translation. That's three things. And you know that you could go to prison. I said, Gene, I'm in prison already in Palestine. So, so it doesn't matter if I am in the house or in prison. You could sue me, you could do whatever you want. And I hang the phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's our first meeting with Gene Sharp. Uh, then Gene Sharp, uh, he have a friend whose name is Eddie Kaufman. He is an Israeli, a Jewish, don't believe in God, a Zionist, and he teach at the Hebrew University. And he said, could you please go and talk to this fellow Mubarak Awad, he is running opening a center in Jerusalem and just talk to him to see what kind of a person he is. So he, so that fellow, Eddie came and he said, I was sent by Jean Sharp and he want to know what person you are. I said, so, so he is an American and he want to know about the Palestinian, what kind of a person where he's coming from, what do you want to know about me? He said, no, he was on a bad foot with you and you translate one of his books and you didn't uh, translate it all, he translated the way you wanted. And uh, he is a scholar and he felt that if you translate his book to Arabic, then uh, in the Arab world, they think that he is a bad writer, you know, that his sentence are, your sentence are not complete and you mix and uh, think. I said, Eddie, as I told him, are you coming? You are an Israeli, you could sue me and have your government sue me too. He said, no, 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 he don't want to sue you. We don't want to sue you. We want just to figure out what you are doing. I said, look, I don't have information about nonviolence as Jean Sharp have all those books. And I translated 
what will fit with the Palestinians, not what will fit with the Americans, with the British, with the Scandinavians, with the uh, Indian, with Haiti, with, you know, other places. I want to translate what can fit with the Palestinians. You say, Mubarak, it's wrong. You are also a professor teaching at the American University. If you write something and somebody translated your work without your knowledge, would you get upset? I say, I'll never get upset. Why? <laughs> All my papers, everything, people translate it left and right, and I'll never care how they translate it. At least they are being translated. He said, no, the American way is different, and Gene is different, and he knows Gene for a long period of time. He is very articulate. And I said, okay. So uh, we put Gene on the phone, and, and I apologized to Gene. And he said, the apology is not enough. I say, okay, what do you want? You want my throat? You want my head? <laughs> so what, what do you want from me? I apologize. I'm telling you, I'm sorry. I did it. Okay. And he said, I would like to have you a conversation with me and with my staff when you come to the United States and you come and visit me uh, at my office, at my center, at the university. And uh, I said, no. I don't know when I'll be in the States, but what about you coming to Jerusalem, coming to Palestine? And uh, I told him, are you a Jew? He said, no, I'm not a Jew. But I am like Eddie, I don't believe in God. I am, my parents are from Sweden. So I told him, you don't have a colonizing, colonization head on your head, a colonization head. No, we don't want to colonize anybody. And I'm opposed to colonization. I said, okay. He got an invitation from the Israeli military and the Israeli security to come to teach Israelis about nonviolence. I'm talking about Gene Sharp. Mm. And when I heard that, I said, uh oh, he's a spy again. <laughs> Why he come to want to teach the Israelis about nonviolence? And the Israeli told him that there's a fellow, Mubarak Awad, his name. And he is making trouble for us. He doesn't want people to pay taxes. And he wants to use Gandhi's method. He wants to use Martin Luther King methods here. And we don't know how to deal with him. So we ask him to come and to teach us how, what is nonviolence, how it works, what to deal with it. And then when Gene Sharp told me that he's going to the Israelis, I, I really felt sad that he's going to go to the Israelis to teach them nonviolence. And I have to get over it fast because he came and he had three weeks. And in the three weeks, he never got in touch with me. And he was in the country for three weeks. I thought at least he will come the second day and have coffee with me or then and then he decided, after he finished completely with the Israeli military and Israeli uh, security and Israeli psychologists and all those big wigs in Israel about nonviolence, he came and he said, I am now want to give you two weeks of my life. And you cannot imagine to give you two weeks of my life is so important and so expensive. I say, I don't have money. And I don't want two weeks of your life. Tell me what you want and we will have a discussion. And so I brought him to the office and sat and have coffee. And uh, I invited Eddie Kaufman. We went to have dinner. And uh, I find him he's a nice fellow. But he would not forget that I translate some of his work without asking him. 
And that's hit him hard. Hit him hard because I'm also a professor. It hit him hard that I have no respect for his work. I said, okay, I got it, I got it. So, so do you have something else? He said, can you show me what you are doing? I said, so that you go and tell the Israelis. <laughs> and he said, no, I already talked to the Israelis. I tell the Israelis everything about nonviolence. As much as I will tell you and tell your people about nonviolence, I'll tell anybody from any government and from any revolution and from anybody, my thought of nonviolence is to spread the word of nonviolence to good people, to bad people, to military people, to everybody. And he was serious, so I accept that. I say, all right, uh, tomorrow I have a meeting with the individual Palestinians who are young people who are really uh, willing to die and kill Israelis mm -hmm. and they, to them, if we kill one, if uh, the Israeli kill one person, we have to kill 10 Israelis. So that's our commitment to the cause of Palestine. And uh, I said, I'm going to meet with them. They all have guns, they all have, uh, uh, you, you name it, with weapons and everything. And if you'd like to come with me, because that's what I'm working with, these young people who are putting bombs around themselves and go and destroy a bus, okay? And I could translate uh, to you, or I have my cousin, Jonathan, he could come and translate it, so it's easier for me to be stand beside you, but have Jonathan to translate. So we went to one place and around four or five o'clock, very secret place even, in a refugee camp. And here the young people came with their weapons. And when they get in, I'll tell them, hey, put your weapons just over there. We don't need to carry them. Or if they are loaded, just unload them. And we have a fellow, his name is Gene Sharp. And I start speaking about Gene Sharp and we explain to them what, what he's doing. And uh, really, it was an amazing thing. They did not reject him. They did not accept him. And uh, he said, I'm scared to death with those young people because I, f I felt that you are putting me here in front of people who are going to shoot me. I said, no, I come every day or every other day or every month when I meet those people, really they are Palestinians. They want to resolve the conflict in violence, in nonviolence, in good or bad, in any way they can. They don't want to be under occupation. And that's what I'm dealing with the Palestinian uh, on, on that concept, on that way of life, dealing with them. And uh, it seems that you don't know a lot about the Palestinians, except in reading books, and you are the first time getting into Palestine. So in this week, I'll be taking you to different refugee camps. I'll take you to different checkpoints. I'll take you to some examples of what we are doing, and you could make your judgment. And hopefully that your judgment Okay, it's not that we want you to not to be against the Israelis. We want you uh, thoughts of your philosophy, of your ideas of nonviolence. He said, Mubarak, I don't have my own thoughts. What I did as a scholar, as a professor, is getting all and everywhere in the world about people using nonviolence. I make an, an analysis of it, and I will put it in writing for people like you to read it 
If you like it, use it. If you don't like it, don't use it. Give it to someone else. So this is what a scholarship is, okay? I have never came to a place or protest groups like what you are doing here. I mean, this is something new to me, that you come and you want to change the mind of those young people to be nonviolence. So, so our uh, friendship become a little bit closer because I, you know, I did not accept that he is the guru of nonviolence because he didn't practice it. And we practice it every day. Mm. We have the Israeli will uh, fire on us, will have uh, smoking guns on us, they have tear gas on us, they have tanks, they have bulldozers, they bulldoze our houses, everything. So I have to show, I showed him that for a week. And then we went different places. I took him to Ramallah. I took him to a group of uh, radicals and group of peaceful and group of women groups, uh, young girls group, uh, schools who I have been trying to introduce nonviolence to them and to let him ask questions of him and he was responding very, very well. Uh, and then we went to Hebron and I told him that uh, uh, in Hebron we have a project and I would show him the project but it's very touchy because the Israelis, they took the street and put fence in front, like two or three feet in front of the uh, Hebron merchants, two or three feet in front of the Hebron merchants. And it is around uh, probably four meters high, okay? And if you want to get in, you have to search you to get in and to get out only in one place or the other, you get in and out. And, uh, and I told them, this is what we are doing. We are bringing buses from uh, every city in Palestine to come and shop in those, with those shopkeepers because the Israeli put a fence to scare people to come and they want them to lose money so they will uh, quit their shops. So our aim was to keep them going and to have other people to shop with them. And I went to many places like uh, uh, people, I'll ask them to give me a TV or five TVs or a refrigerator or a stove or for anybody who's shop, he will, he or she will take a card like a lottery thing, a paper with the numbers on it. We keep the number and the fellow get a number. And then every week we put it in the newspaper. Those are the people, the numbers of, if you have those numbers, that means you win a refrigerator, you win the TV, you win uh, like 200 pounds or you know, or $300, whatever it is. So we have thousands of people start shopping in those. And that the Israel got so upset that they arrest me and, uh, but, uh, <clears throat> and he said, where you got this idea? I said, I didn't get it from any of your books. That idea, we collect people and we told them what they want, the shopkeepers. They told us we want to stay, uh, you know, open, and we hope to have people not to be afraid to come and shop. And uh, we have others that said, what about having a lottery that anybody who shops 
they benefit. And we have others, they say, uh, bring international people to let them see how the Israelis, okay, want to bankrupt those merchants. So we, we we did all all those things, and this is and that's what people want, and we just abide by it. So he liked liked the idea. I told him that also Hebron have the okay. If you want, if you are religious and you want to see the tomb of Abraham and Sarah, which are the top religious of the Muslim, Christians, and Jews. I'll, I'll show you that. He said, no, if you just take me around there with the car, and that's good enough. So I was with him in the car, I was driving, and here we have settlers and we have military Israelis, and he was taking picture of the military. And the military, they have four, five, six tents around us. And I told Gene, you have red face. Don't, don't show that you are scared. He say, okay, so what should I say? And I say, just leave it to me. So why this fellow is taking pictures? I said, he doesn't take your picture, he take the pictures of the donkeys. You see those donkeys? He loved donkeys. <laughs> and he take pictures of donkeys. So don't, don't associate yourself with donkeys. He say, tell him, tell him to leave. He's not allowed to take pictures here. We are in the military. And we thought that he was taking our picture. No, I said, he doesn't want your picture, he wants the picture of the donkeys. And Gene was stunned. He said, where did this? I said, I have no idea. This is what I thought at that moment. So they, they left us and he left them. They didn't take uh, his film out of the camera or, you know. So uh, that. then after that, he sent me all his books and he started translating most of the books to Arabic and send me the books and send me how to download them and to download them free even. And I pushed that in the whole Arab world. So we became friends. I came and see him and give lectures with his students uh, in Boston. And then <clears throat> I have the opportunity. I told him, uh, I want to take you, Eugene, to meet Arafat, who is the head of the PLO in Tunis, and to discuss nonviolence with the top people of the Palestinian. Mm -hmm. Boy, he jumped to that fast. And before that, we have three days in Washington, a discussion about what with uh, some other Palestinian, how to approach Arafat in this nonviolence approach. We have one week and all the Abus, you know, the Palestinian will call Abu this, Abu that, Abu that. All the leaders are Abus. And uh, we went and we really were very uh, much interested and so many of the questions, and some of the questions of the PLO and the Palestinian leadership was how nonviolence work with the settlements. Mm. So Gene Sharp will go at night and he will write three, four pages, how to deal with settlements and how you deal with the discrimination against the Palestinians how you deal with the laws of the Israelis, that they have discrimination against even a baby Palestinian to be born, you know, all, all those things. And then the US knew that I was in Tunis, 
which is forbidden by any American to talk to the PLO and I'm an American citizen, but also I'm in Israel. And they said, the ambassador, American ambassador, he said, can you bring your group whom you are teaching the PLO of nonviolence to us at the embassy for at least one day workshop with all our workers there. And we did that. And from that point, I became friendly with that ambassador because he didn't went to the Israeli and told them that I am in Tunis with Arafat. So we kept that uh, good. And uh, then <clears throat> I have, I brought some Palestinians and they have interview with uh, Jean Char about the strategy of Palestinians, uh, a fellow by the name of Afif Safiye, who was, uh, who was our ambassador, okay, in the United States, that he have long, long interview with him. And then we start communicating well with him. Uh, and, and until his, he died, and we became very close friends that he asked in, in uh, his uh, last will that I will speak in his uh, memory. Mm. And, and I did that. And then he gave us all his books for Nonviolent International. Mm -hmm. He gave us the right of all his books. He gave us anything we want from his office, any books we want. But I left it there because there is a lady by the name of Jamila. She said, could I continue his work? And we kept everything for her to continue his work. Mm -hmm. So that's our uh, thing with, uh, with Gene Sharp. Thank you for joining us as Mubarak reflected on his relationship with Gene Sharp. If you think these conversations are important and would like to see them continue, please consider supporting NVI and the work we do by subscribing to this YouTube channel, following us on Twitter and Facebook, and visiting our website. Please consider donating to our organization and checking out our nonviolent training archive and database linked in the description. Every little bit counts to help build a more just and nonviolent world.